you have for 50 plus years devoted an enormous amount of time and energy to your work. What's it like to not be able to go at the job in the way that you've been accustomed to? Well, I, I, I suppose I would have been tapering off some anyway. We were at a film that, uh, that Gary Trudeau produced uh, for Amazon and they had Afghan scenes in it. And I turned to my and I said, God, I miss that. I miss being there. And, uh, but I also knew intellectually that, you know, that time would have gone by with or without cancer. It was a time for a new generation to jump on those planes. Now, the past year, I've been to Berlin. You know, I've been to Normandy for D-Day. I've been to South America. So I haven't shut it down entirely. Television news has changed a lot in the little over 50 years since you got into it. What do you think now when you tune in and watch American network newscasts? Well, I, you know, it's... Um, the line that I use that surprises everybody, I, you know, in those days when I began, everything that you saw was through the prism of white middle-aged men who lived on the eastern seaboard. That was okay by me. I was going to be one of them one day. Now we have a much greater variety of stories and people who are reporting those stories. There were no women on the air with the exception of Nancy Dickerson and Pauline Frederick, and they only got on episodically. There were no people of color on the air, no people with different kind of ethnic backgrounds who brought those values to what they're doing. So that's encouraging on the one hand. On the other hand, now, you, uh, people are not willing to risk the long, difficult stories uh, and say to the audience, this is important, it's going to take some time, we're going to take you through it. You left the Today Show in 1981 in part because you were tired of celebrity interviews and stuff that you thought was fluff. The Today Show now has a lot more of that stuff than it ever has before. When you watch the Today Show, what goes through your head? Well, I, I talk to him about it. I would like to see him doing uh, something that is a little more substantive from time to time. I, I say to them, and, and look, they're all terrific at what they do and they work really hard at it. Uh, I say, you know, I think the audience is kind of looking for guidance at 7.15 in the morning, not just for the latest laugh line or the latest Kardashian line of some kind. But I'm, I'm not someone who interferes. I left the Today Show knowing that they had to do what they were going to do. Uh, but I'd always grown up as a hard news reporter, and that's all I wanted to be. I love being on the Today Show, by the way. Uh, I met more authors and important dramatic figures and became friends with them. It broadened my view of the world being there. But five years was about enough. Has Brian Williams' credibility been so damaged that he cannot return to being an effective anchor of NBC Nightly News. Nice try, I'm not gonna go there. Uh, we're, uh, we're dealing with that inside, and, um, and in fairness to everybody, in, in fairness to the people at NBC News who are out there every day covering those stories and risking their lives, in fairness to Brian and his family and his advisors, I think we just should let the process play itself out. We're in the middle of it right now, and there will be a resolution at some point, and that's what we have to wait for. Let's tap into your experience then and give some maybe good advice to the idealistic young journalists who are looking for the right place to go in this line of work and heaven knows it's changing so quickly that it's tough to, to tell them what to do, but what do you say to young people who want to become journalists nowadays? Well, I say pretty much the same thing. Uh, first of all, you have to learn to write because whatever form you take, whether it's digital or television or streaming or radio or whatever, you have to express yourself in a way that the public can understand it. And writing is the key to that. Writing is even more important in many ways in the digital world because so much of that is just pure writing. If I were starting over again, um, would I go start with a network? Maybe not. Maybe I'd go start with a digital outlet of some kind, uh, Bloomberg or one of the others, because they've got a kind of a broad horizon of places and opportunities for you to do both a little television, a little digital, a little print. You know, it's, I think it's a great opportunity. And, God knows every kid I know wants to get into it. Uh, we're just about to kick off uh, the start of summer. How much time this summer do you hope to spend in, in trout streams in Montana? <laughs> a lot, actually. I'm, you know, because of the book, I'll be here uh, until uh, the kind of the middle part of June. And then I've got some other things that I have to be doing as well. But then I hope to go to Montana and um, stare at the big sky and, and be in the water as much as I can and work on that reconditioning piece. That's a good place to do it. We're at 5,600 feet, and so I'm out with my dog in the morning going up and down uh, the foothills and into the mountains and wading the streams, and that's the best kind of 
holistic conditioning you can do, frankly. Uh, so I want to do that.